there's three types of lassos. Uh, there's the freeform lasso. So let's hit L to get to the lasso tool. And the freeform lasso tool ah, uh, works if you just uh, click and drag around. That forms a shape. So let's say I just wanted to uh, roughly grab this baby's head. Uh, you'll notice that isn't working because I already have a selection. Let's hit Control D. So I just want to grab this baby's head. I can just Control C, Control V, and now we have it on its very own layer. Fantastic. Um, here, let's go back one more step. The next type, after the freeform lasso tool, there is an option to feather that. Always leave anti-alias on unless you need to do something very pixel perfect, generally for web design. Let me step back one more time. Uh, the other net type is the polygonal lasso tool, and this is the one that I use by far the most. And the way that this works is um, all you do is you click, 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 and between every point, um, a line forms. So it works kind of like a pair of scissors in this way. So let me make it so you can actually see when I click. There we go. And now, whenever you click, a line forms between each of those clicks. And in that way, you can cut out any shape you want. Now, let's say you've made a selection and you want to add to it. The way to do that is by holding down Shift and then adding to a selection. Now, let's say you start adding to a selection. You go a little bit too far. Hold down Alt, and then you can subtract from that selection. Uh, control doesn't really do too much. It's not used that often here. You double-click to close the selection. Now, one piece of advice that I have for you with the lasso tool is don't start a selection with it because trying to cut around a complicated shape would take forever and you wouldn't be that accurate. Uh, instead, start with something like the quick select and then move to the lasso tool. It's good for those final touches. So as far as uh, technique, just zoom in a bunch, see if it's actually working on and off. So I'm just using the space bar to pan around to see where it's working and where it's not working. And I can see there's a little bit of a problem here. If you accidentally click it, you can always hit escape to get out of it. So there's a little bit of a problem right here. I held down alt and now I can click these to get rid of it. Now let's say you are starting with a brand new selection. Something I suggest is instead of starting on the edge, most people will start on the edge. See how that's the very edge of it? Instead of starting on the edge, where if you double click and make a mistake, you get some shape like this forming. Or here, let's uh, shift select and keep adding to this selection right here. So here we go. I accidentally double click and I get a shape that I don't want. Instead of starting on the edge, start in the middle. And that way, if you double click, You're left with a shape like this, which is a lot more of what you want, and then you can always hold shift and keep adding to the selection. Now let's say you're going around selecting, you accidentally do one point that isn't exactly where you want it. If you hit delete multiple times, delete, 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 you can actually take a few steps back. So if I'm doing this and I see it's a little bit off, delete, delete. So that is uh, the polygonal lasso tool. And then the last one is the magnetic lasso tool, and the way that that works is you uh, click in the center first and then just kind of roughly go along the edge and in that way you can get the point. Now the trick with the magnetic lasso tool is when you get to a corner click on that corner and then it knows to give you a sharp corner right there. There's a couple of options in the magnetic lasso tool. Like all the other selection tools you can hold shift to add to the selection Alt to subtract from the selection, Escape to cancel, double click to uh, agree with it. Uh, but then also you can set the width. The width says how far from the exact place that the cursor is do you want it to look for a border. So if this is 10 pixels away from a border, here we go. My computers are lagging a little bit right now. If this is 10 pixels away from the border, it'll still find that border. How much of a contrast do you need between the light and the dark? This is at 10%, that's pretty standard. Uh, and then frequency, how often do you want it to set it a point, to a point? And when I say set to a point, that's just saying how many pixels do you want between every uh, you know, actual point that's set. You can always set a point manually by double clicking while using the magnetic lasso tool. One other thing that you can do with the magnetic lasso tool is if you're already using it and you hold down shift, excuse me, if you hold down alt, it will actually turn into the polygonal lasso tool automatically. Uh, temporarily. And then if you let go of Alt, it'll turn back into the magnetic lasso tool again. So that's a way to switch between those two to tools using them simultaneously. If you have, do have a tablet, you can affect the sensitivity of uh, how large of a wet width uh, it looks for the edge right there.
So those are the three lasso tools. And remember, these are uh, the polygonal and magnetic lasso tool are mostly used to do changes after you've already used the quick selection tool or the wand tool. And the lasso tool is generally used just for rough areas. To deselect, hit Control D. And that's the lasso tools. For the full four hour Photoshop crash course, click on the link below. And to get more of the tools, just click on this link inside the video itself. Thanks for joining.